within a few weeks, the, the suicidal thoughts just disappeared. My lens on the world changed. UCSF scientists have cracked the code on getting this woman to be depression-free for the last year. In a first-of-its-kind trial, they implanted a device in her brain that senses when she's having depressive thoughts and interrupts them with a burst of electrical stimulation. The patient, Sarah, had exhausted all treatment options for her severe depression that has lasted for five years. That is, until this study. When I first received the stimulation, the aha moment occurred. I felt the most intensely joyous sensation, and my depression was a distant nightmare for a moment. We identified a circuit in her brain that was specific to her depression, and we deliver therapeutic stimulation to one area of that circuit, and we sense neural activity in the other area of that circuit, and so we can monitor and treat in an iterative loop, um, but only when she needs it. The UCSF team mapped out areas of Sarah's brain that showed positive feelings as well as locations that emitted waves when she was depressed. From there, they put Sarah under the knife and implanted the equivalent of a pacemaker for her brain. After taking months for the whole process to get fully up and running, Sarah has felt no side effects. Now all of their findings have been published in Nature Medicine. It affords us precision in a way that we've never really had before in, in treating depression. This is something that is just gently there, gently nudging them towards their best selves. It's hard to have a patient in your office where you've tried everything and there's nothing left to offer. And so I think this evidence that this type of therapy can work provides hope to patients. The scientists are quick to say this is just the first step in a very long process. And because each person's brain mapping needs to be personalized, this won't be scaled up in big numbers anytime soon. Still, they have added two new patients to the clinical trial and hope to add nine more. I think there's opportunities in the future to make it um, scalable for and more generalizable to a larger population. Um, but right now, it's, it's in its very earliest phases. There could be a whole other um, type of treatments that are based on biomarkers that can deliver treatment in, on short time frames rather than antidepressants, which act on, on a much longer time frames. So I think it has a lot of implications. You know, medication is something, it's like a cudgel. It's always there, it's always, you know, there's a lot of side effects, everything else. And this potentially revolutionary type of treatment could have long-reaching effects. The approach itself is not specific to depression then also. It can be broadly applied to many psychiatric and um, neurologic conditions. We're starting to recognize some of the complexity um, that's involved with how mood is regulated in the brain as a network. Um, not just one particular node in the part of the brain that's responsible for all of mood, but interacting areas in the brain that um, give rise to really complex uh, emotions that uh, underlie things like depression and anxiety. The battery in Sarah's device will last over 10 years, and scientists are hopeful it can adapt with any feelings of depression she has. For now, she is relishing her newfound joy. This is another option. I hope people hear this and, you know, they, they reach out to their, per, their medical providers and, and ask if this is something that would work for them.